Francesco uh, Kanchania uh, from former Director of Controlling at Swarovski. And today he will take us through his experience at Swarovski. So Francesco, over to you whenever you're ready. Thank you, Hans. <clears throat> Let me start sharing the, um, my experiences with Swarovski related to intelligent transformation. Well, um, for those who um, know or don't know, um, Swarovski it is it's an Austrian producer of crystal glass and um, also jewelry and accessories. It's, um, it's a family-owned business with more than 120 years, and it has a revenue size of approximately 2.7 billion euros. Um, to a starting point of this um, high-level introduction of the Swarovski experience, on transformation was back in the time of perhaps um, 2019, 20, where they had the, 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 the greatest transformation in their history related to, um, we can summarize in terms of one vision, one strategy and one team. What that means is the brand transformation, which is repositioning from premium to affordable luxury space, then aligned the end-to-end -end strategy between different business units like B2C and B2B have um, a one organization model, a centralized event, as opposed to um, having the, uh, different um, divisions in place like consumer goods or crystal separate. It's just one big organization centrally driven. And that was the situation and, uh, related to the starting point in 2019-20. So if we move on to the, to the next slide, lead, lead us to where should we begin? Right. I mean, we are in, in controlling or FBNA. Um, where should we start? There are different elements of intelligent transformation that Hans already introduced related to process, analytics, technology, etc. But for for us, it was uh, thinking crucially about four four areas. First, about business strategy and company value change, and why that? Because we need to know where exactly the company is. In this case, Swarovski was focused on retail innovation and, and brand transformation. Second was the maturity model. Where are we? Right? If we are in the high growth, if we're declining. And don't forget, when that was launched in 2019, we, um, COVID-19 hit us, which was impacting financially in the turnaround revenue as well. Um, also, the third point, it's related to organizational setup. What I mean by that, it's we need to understand what sort of organization we have. It was a centralized, decentralized model. Certainly, we want more of a decentralized model to more centralized performance-driven model. And finally, the last point is crucial to, to understand before moving to any categories, uh, FP&A categories, to understand the performance management system. What I mean by that, how do we create an effective process to reward managers based on the new strategy and financial ambitions? So if we move on to the next slide, um, we have this, um, the, the starting point with redefinition of the performance management system to support this business transformation. So this slide, uh, what it's trying to say is that we have different angles on how we will tackle that and that was based on the new financial steering concept. Um, what was that is, is if we wanted to look at a standard way to commercially steer the company to retail lenses, traditional retail lenses, meaning re looking at the performance based on geography, based on channel offline, online, for instance, and multiple products. This concept, the redefinition of the concept was the definitely the foundation of what the future performance reporting planning and business performance analysis will be in the in the future back in 2020 and that is then can be categorized in these four elements related to managerial view moving from legal entity view performance to really commercially driven performance reporting landscape with this very um atomized resource test driven and great deal of customization to more standard well governed reporting, more static and manual reporting to more self service enabled reporting and um, silo, I will say, thinking and um, business unit driven, non-standard business performance review, whereas more centralized, collaborated business process review. Um, 
and that was the, the the intention with these four elements to address right in a high level so if we move on to the next slide we try to explain here how we did it so in terms of the managerial view we started to look at the business performance, as I said, based on the market, product, and channels, PLs, as opposed to just legal entity. Legal entity PLs, as a um, balance sheet and cash flow, and other financial estimates still are produced for specific legal compliance and audit reasons, for sure. Um, but it related to um, commercial performance was based on these um, categories. Second, in terms of reporting landscape, was the standardization of that which was um, related to the standardization of reports provided by the shared service center we have there. We achieved around 60% of reduction here compared to what it was at the beginning of the journey. Second was, a uh, third point was related to develop or introduction, I would say, of self service and dashboard reporting to commercial functions. Um, four element was to redesign the business performance review cycle based on the entire planning cycle we have from the top to the, um, the organization, board of directors, um, also um, board manage management, uh, global regions, etc. So we have a, a standard way of looking at our performance um, from top to, to down. So if we move to the next um, slide, we will see, um, try to summarize in very high level, obviously, um, what was the lesson learned on this redefinition of the performance management system? Right? Um, there are many and plenty, but, um, but if I would like to take two of them, um, I will say we, we really need to be able to focus our priorities um, at the first place. And the second focus point will be an execution. Right? We know that if we look at all the elements of what we can change in FBA, uh, it could be data process, people, technology, uh, functional skills, etc. But not everything can be changed at once, and so we need to make sure that we we have the commitment from our management, we have our priorities right, and we really focus on delivering on this promise uh, as opposed to just uh, having the the strategy on a paper. No, so. Examples of these lesson learners more specifically could be related to functional skills, for instance. What I mean by that is the organizational people maturity, it takes time. It, it can be tackled by, by phases for sure. It can be addressed in one or two years, but I bit longer than that. Other example is business partnering, which is probably if you want to think about a long-hanging fruit in terms of intelligent transformation, that will be one of them, which is related to train your finance team now on those skills. Third point in process, uh, many times forgotten, right? We really need to understand our assist process and realize that to be is a moving target. What I mean by that is we need to have a comp company reference model framework and plan year by year our world to be deliverables, what, what we would like to be, right? It's a moving target always to be. And the four elements on lesson learned is related to that analytics area or topic. I put here the start small and room POCs. I give you two examples of that. For instance, establish data governance in place with clearly data owners and data stewards, and to drive end to end and the areas in controlling OFPNA, as you would like to call it. Second example will be starting a small and run proof of concept, like in, uh, for reporting and uh, standardization, introduction of RPNA or macros, any other enabler in place to be able to be more efficient and effective. And that's all from, from my side. Back to you, Hans. Francesco, thank you very much. Uh, a great presentation.